Hello guys, this is Tafadzwa from StackDev and welcome to my YouTube course. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about how to build cloud-native Java applications using Quarkus. So Quarkus is a Radiant Java framework used to build Kubernetes native Java applications using GraalVM and Hotspot. So just a little bit of background. So traditionally, Java applications were mainly built for monolithic architectures. So what this means is applications would take long startup time and large memory footprint. So traditionally, so this wasn't a problem because for the most part, these applications were deployed to uh, servers. So instead of having a serverless architecture or a cloud uh, applications like what we have today, this wasn't a problem, right? Because for the most part, you could actually go ahead and assign resources uh, to these applications. So this was not uh, a problem until um, things changed when Kubernetes and container friendly environments like Docker were introduced. So for the most part, uh, we know that Java was not was not the best in terms of performing uh, on short lived um, environments and container friendly environments like Kubernetes. So which means the solution in terms of scalability, in terms of managing resources, since Java would hold on unto memory, uh, unto system resources, uh, this was an issue in terms of uh, scaling applications. So Java framework set to evolve to meet the new standards uh, of cloud native demands. So as I mentioned earlier, Quarkus is a native, uh, is a Kubernetes uh, native Java framework tailored uh, for mainly GraalVM and Hotspot, right? So GraalVM, Grau uh, it offers high performance JDK designed to accelerate the execution of applications through ahead of time compilation and native image compilation, right? So what this means is, so for the most part, uh, like uh, what all java applications used to do uh, java applications used to do uh, compilation used to do used to used to build a, an, an application and then uh, after building an application when you compile it uh, like compiling classes or pairing the applications to be run uh, in a uh, uh, on a certain environment you'd have to do all that compilation at runtime right so what what this introduces right like the normal old java applications you would actually see that your applications would have a uh, long startup time um, and they would require more memory uh, in terms of um, a memory usage that would be required by the application but with quarkus uh, they uh, they used uh, an approach uh, through a uh, grow vm uh, that is called the container first approach right so if you can see the traditional application so for the traditional applications you would have you would package your your application right during build time and then th during runtime you'd actually go ahead and load classes and all the classes that will be required uh, for that specific applications and then at the, at the end of the day you'd have some uh, some sort of a fat jar uh, that would uh, that would then deploy uh, to your environment so this would this would uh, eat up resources uh, like memory and then startup time right because like imagine compiling uh, classes uh, that you'd need uh, to use and most of these classes for the most part you just need them to use them once right so this was an issue right because you can you can imagine a situation where your application when it boots up right it requires more resources uh, for example like uh, compiling classes uh and etc and you see that those uh, uh classes and then the dependency trees of those classes most of them would not be used during runtime of the uh, of the, or the actual runtime or usage of, or the business use of the application right so you'd assign resources uh to your um uh, environment and then at the end of the day you end up not using these resources right so what grow vm um or what quarkus uh, did was to use something called uh, a container uh, first philosophy so the idea with the container first philosophy uh, what it does is so for the most part what you used to do at runtime you now need to do it uh, during b time so what this means is uh, so as much as possible um, classes uh, like uh, building classes required to perform initial application deployment uh, was going to be done uh, is going to be done uh, during build time 
right so when you are building um, uh, your application this is where you compile your classes and then uh, most of the classes that won't be used uh, for example for business logic uh, will then be dropped right so which means when you build your application um, it will uh, it will actually uh, it will actually build uh, the classes uh, that you need to use uh, or to initialize your application and then once that is done it will then uh, it won't uh, load those uh, builds, uh, those classes into the final JVM or the final JAS or the native executables, right? So it also uh, supports, it also accomplishes this container first philosophy uh, also through reduction in reflection usage, right? So what this means is so for classes that are not going to be used um, uh, for your business logic or for classes that you'd only require uh, when you boot up your application or when you prepare your application, when you run it, uh, these are so all those classes will, will then be dropped right because what reflection does is so for the most part for classes that you need to use during runtime of your applications so you can also register them for reflection right so if you want those uh, classes to be recognized by the uh, native image right so for example you can with graph you can do a native image executable right so what what, what this means uh, is so for classes that you would require uh, during runtime of, of, uh, of your application uh, you can actually do something called native um, uh, you can also do what we call reflection right but uh, with quarkus it automatically move uh, these cl these classes that are not going to be used uh, by our application or the classes that are only required uh, during uh, during um, uh, runtime or the business logic of our application so this is what we call reduction in reflection usage so the, with the also the container first philosophy it also supports something called first class support for ground native images right so when you build your native uh, image that will be deployed maybe to a kubernetes container or that you would need to use to spin up a container um, these uh, classes they will be supported by the native environment of graph vm Right. Then it also sub, uh, uh, it also achieves this uh, through something called native image preboot. Right. So what this does uh, does is Quarkus supports native executables that can be run with the GraalVM. Right. So so that that's the whole idea. So just to give you a, sort of like a picture in terms of how this works. So this picture is from the Quarkus website. So during build time, right. So you see that uh, Quarkus is now uh, sort of like uh, building. Um, the, the the native executables or the JVMs. Um, so it's sort of like uh, during build time, right? That's when it compiles the classes, it does all the processing. Then during runtime, uh, during compile time, I mean, uh, that's when uh, you you know run your business logic or your business class of your application. So what this does is at the at the end of the day, it will give you an application with low uh, memory footprint, which means you won't require um, uh, much memory. Uh, in terms of uh, running your application and also and, and it also improves uh, the startup uh, time of your application massively right so that's mainly the advantage uh, of using Quarkus it's very container friendly um, and it also performs well in terms of uh, in Kubernetes environments so in terms of uh, performance again this image from the Quarkus website you can actually go ahead and check it out so in terms of uh, performance you can actually see that uh, in terms of memory usage for for example let's say if you're creating a rest a api uh with quarkus uh it actually takes uh you know 12 megabytes right to run quarkus uh via native uh image uh, using uh, the the virtual machine called uh, GraalVM, right? So with GraalVM, the native executable would require would only eat up uh, 12 megabytes, right? But if you compare it with traditional applications, you can actually see that it's 136 megabytes. So in terms of performance, you can actually see that in terms of memory usage with Quarkus, it really reduces the memory blueprint. Then again, if you compare it with the, with the, with the CRUD, uh, the rest with the CRUD API, uh, 28 again is 209, right? So you can actually see that in terms of memory, uh, the memory is significantly reduced uh, using Quarkus. So in terms of performance, uh, Quarkus does exceptionally well. 
then in terms of response time um in terms of uh, booting up your application you can actually see that for the rest uh, api and even for the uh, rest with the crud uh, the quarkus api uh, with uh, build with grow vm it only takes less than a second to boot up but if you compare it with traditional uh, native uh, i mean traditional uh, jvms um, or open jdk you can actually see that it takes uh, you know 4.3 seconds or 9.3 seconds depending with the uh, how big your application is so in terms of boot up time uh, quarkus uh, is you know so so this this gives an advantage right so in terms of uh, scaling your application uh, uh, let's say in a kubernetes environment let's say you deploy a change and want to boot up your application it will boot up in no instant right so this is a great performance uh, improvement right in terms of uh, how java applications are related to the cloud uh, cloud uh, environment so with this said um in uh, enough of theory so in this in this sort of I'm si we are simply going to create a simple restful api using quarkus so we are going to see how uh, you can actually create a restful api using quarkus right so stay tuned <laughs>